tell you guys the way I would uh, practice this is try drawing out the heart in the chambers as many times as you can. We know this stuff on Monday and Tuesday, so essentially we have. Tissues in here actually separates both the left and the right ventricles. They have no communication. Remember that? Do you remember, I kept talking about if you take the heart out of somebody and you put it in some type of special fluid with enough electrolytes and everything, it's got its ability to pump, right? What's that called? There's two different ways you can call it. Two different words. So you have contractility, meaning the heart cells they actually want to contract on their own. The cells are specialized, unlike any other uh, cell in the body. So if you chop off the arm, you throw it in a petri dish, I mean, in a, in a dish filled with fluid, with electrolytes, it's going to die, right? It's blood supply. But when we're talking about the actual um, heart, what ends up happening is that the cells within them, they function in their own. They have contractility. Or, or automaticity. You guys have to know these terms. You remember, remember what we were talking about? Down, make sure you know it. So that's the whole thing about the heart. Okay. Now, what's uh, when, when you're looking at a patient or a, a diagram of the heart, you're upset, assuming that the patient's on their anatomical position. So this is how my heart is, right? The apex is on this side, so it's kind of curving this way. So what's this part of the heart? Right where you should be. Okay. Now, when we talk about the right atrium, the right atrium is really important because the receiving center of a lot of things, different things. What does it receive? Deoxygenated blood. Okay, good. So what is the receiver from? From the superior and the superior and inferior vena cava. There's one more area behind the inferior vena cava uh, that it receives information from the surface of the heart. Do you guys remember what that's called? The coronary sinus. Okay, so behind the heart, I, I, I just like a drawing. Okay, guys. So if you turn the heart around, you have another section where you have all the coronary arteries of the great, the great, um, the great cardiac vein, as we would call. It last week or earlier this week. So they all bundle up together and they get all the deoxygenated blood from the coronary arteries and send it through the veins into the coronary sinus and it dumps into the right atrium as well. Okay? So those are the three main ones. The one that you can really see is superior and inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Alright, so after that, <coughs> the right atrium fills up. Um, as it fills up, as it contracts, what other chamber contracts? The left atrium. Remember, both atria contract at the same time, and both ventricles contract at the same time. So, as the right atrium is getting filled up, what's, hap what's happening in the right atrium and the left atrium since it's contracting as well? It's the oxygenated blood that's being that it's, uh, so, so they're both being filled in with something, right? Okay, so it's receiving the, uh, um, it's receiving at the same time it's pumping out the, the oxygen blood. All right, anyway, right atrium um, goes, after this, where does, it, where does the blood go? To the, to the tricuspid Okay, the tricuspid valve. Okay, guys, now, tricuspid valve, we'll draw them like that. It's tri for three. There's three, do you guys remember what these things are called? The little fibers? The no. What, what was it? No, no, not the kidney fibers. That's more of the electrical conduction. You guys know what they're called? Because I'm going to test you on these, okay? These are part of the, uh, they're called coordinate tenderness. It's easier to spell in these little sloppy than correct, but it's the coordinate tenderness. So if I ever ask you guys, um, we have uh, fibers, or we have uh, these uh, fiber-like structures in the mitral, which is the bicuspid valve, or the tricuspid valve, they're called coordinate tenderness. Chambers right here distribute blood to the right and left upper extremities and then the brain respectively. So that's essentially what they do. Okay. Any questions on this or what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It distributes to the brain. Well, see, understand the aorta is this big fat vessel right here, right? It, it goes like this. All the way down to the bottom. Now, 
it's still the aorta, okay, but it's, it's going to be called ascending arch and descending aorta, right? And then from there you have other little um, capillaries, not capillaries, but arteries are just a little smaller than the aorta, and they distribute blood throughout the rest of the body. Like, so if this one goes to the right arm, this one goes to the left arm, and that one goes to the brain. Okay, then you have your carotid artery, and then they branch off to supply the left and the right hemispheres and so on and so forth. Does that make sense here? Contractility, automaticity is. Okay. Vestibular valve, monic and aortic, we're good. Or erase this. Um, can you show them the auto vestibular? Yes. Yeah. So I'll show Okay, so. Contractility, automatic is, it does things automatic, right? Contractility means it wants to contract. So what happens is, if you take, um, if you take the heart and remove it from the chest cavity, okay? Normally, if you do that to any, any other organ in the body, what's going to happen to the organ? Hmm? It dies. You take my eyeball out. You guys seen Kill Bill? Everyone's Kill Bill now. Right, so in Kill Bill, this is the chicks are fighting, and they do this move, and they rip out the eyeball. So the eyeball is essentially done with. They need, they need uh, blood supply, right? You need, uh, otherwise you're going to have ischemia. So the eyeball dies. The heart, on the other hand, is a little different. It's going to want to keep pumping because the cells, okay, when we talked about the, the actual cells of the heart are striated, but they're involuntary, okay? They have this uh, property that's called automaticity or contractility that it wants to continue to pump even in the presence of very low, low oxygen, unless the tissue is dead. So that's why if you have it in a, in a solution that has oxygen in it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even if you remove it from the body, it'll still want to contract on its own because the cells themselves want to contract. That's a property that the heart cells have. So contractility means They're interchangeable, yeah. Automaticity meaning it's automatic. Contractility means it wants, it wants to contract. I'm not going to be testing you guys on... Actually, I'm not going to... I want you guys to know what this is so you can understand the whole purpose of the heart. You know, you're gonna see it in the in the in the reading. I want you guys to kind of understand. Okay, it'd be unfair for me to just kind of leave it up there. But do you understand? Yeah. Okay, cool. Alright, let's talk about the, the the sections of the heart. Okay, so if um, remember last uh, earlier this week I showed you that big old slide with they remove the chunk of the heart. Okay. I'm gonna show you guys like if uh, a lateral view of the heart. So this is the outside. The innermost layer of the heart. Imagine like I ripped that chunk out. So the innermost that actually touches the blood, what's it called? The inside of the heart, the inside of the heart, the inside of the chamber, what's it called? It touches the blood. Right, someone said it, I think. Yeah, the endocardium, right? That's the endocardium. Okay. On your, you guys have your package with you? That's called the myocardium. The myocardium is always going to be the thickest chunk of heart. In particular, the left ventricle is even more thick than the rest of the chambers, right? But the, the, the myocardium is the thickest part. You guys understand that? Now let's talk about the, the last part. The epicardium, I'm talking about, look, the actual wall that touches the myocardium. Do you understand what that means? This is like the epidermis, okay, that's attached to the dermis. You guys remember when we were doing antagonistry? So now we have the endocardium, the myocardium, and now we have the epicardium. You guys understand that? Now, on the epicardium, you have a sheet, a sheet of a substance, okay? 
that just wraps around the whole heart. Okay, think of it like uh, the back of my hand is the uh, epicardium. This right here is a sheet. There's two layers to that sheet. This sheet protects the heart. Remember there's a little bit of fluid inside? Okay, the outer surface that's away from the epicardium is called what? The parietal. P, think of periphery. You guys know what periphery is? Your peripheral vision is on the outside. Like if you do this with your hand out here, you can see it as the peripheral vision. So P for peripheral, for, so it's going to be your, which layer is this? Parietal. Parietal. Okay, P for periphery, but it's parietal. This is your parietal layer, and now the layer that is actually touching the, the epicardium is called the what? The visceral, because it's touching the actual organ. You guys know when I was talking to, uh, like several, uh, several weeks ago, I would say, um, remember viscera? Viscera, and that's why it's called, it's, remember when we're talking about an opening of the, of the, of the stomach during um, surgery? If you have like huge sutures or something that cough too hard, it opens up, and then you, that's called dehiscence, right? And then if the intestines come out, it's called evisceration. Or you hear like someone got eviscerated, it got gutted, like they got knifed and their intestines came out. So that's why visceral is talking about organs. So understand that the visceral layer is touching the epicardium. The parietal is touching the, is uh, away from the actual epicardium. So is the visceral, the epicardium is the same as the epicardium? It's letting you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, let me, let me see. It, it is the same thing. It's just letting you know. Is it the, the, the top area or the one that's actually connected to the the epicardium, guys, is like a sheet that covers the whole heart. Okay, this is the epicardium layer. Right? Okay, the outside of the actual heart. The part that's touching the heart is called the visceral. The part that you can touch is called the parietal. Okay, I know it's a little confusing. It was, it was really confusing to me. And when we do GI, remember these concepts because GI is the same thing. We have the viscera, you have the parietal, and then we have the, the visceral. So we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. But just remember that viscera is touching the organ, parietal is away from the organ. All right? So does that make it a little more clear? No. Uh, okay, so you said the epicardium is the outside layer. Yes, it's this outside layer. Okay. Right the pericardium is what wraps the entire heart. It's so right on It's right on the epicardium, yeah. But wraps the entire heart. The system. entire heart, Okay. Yeah. But that? It's a sac. That's exactly what it is. It's like a balloon. It's a, yeah, it's like a little balloon. Yeah. And it's touched, it's attached to but the actual. In here it says it has three layers. Yeah, yeah because the layer, the, there's, a, there's another layer towards the, remember I told you guys, just remember two? Uh-huh. Okay. The other layer, it actually adheres the, it sticks the, um, let me show you this paper real quick, okay? This is the, um, this is the pericardium. We said that, we said that there's three layers, right? Mm -hmm. The pericardium is on the epicardium. It's on the heart. Now, there's three main layers. I told you guys to just memorize the two. But anyway, we'll talk about all three. You have the uh, visceral layer, okay, that's touching the actual heart. You have the parietal layer that's away from that, that's on this side. And right on top of that, you have that third layer that adheres or sticks the actual whole thing into the chest cavity or the, um, um, no, not the thoracic, the um, mediastin. You guys remember what we were talking about in Nero? We talked about meninges. The meninges had how many layers? Three layers. Three layers. Um, it had the dual ladder, the arachnoid layer, and the pia matter. And then there's in the test that asks you what's in between the arachnoid layer and the pia matter, the arachnoid space. You would have known that if you would have read it. It's like, I mean, it's really right there, you know? Now, is it dry? What does it have? Cerebral spinal fluid. It's the same concept and now for the heart. Now, the, the meninges actually protect the spinal column and the brain. The pericardium now protects the heart. Cool? Okay. I know it's tough, guys, really. And right now, I'm teaching you more than what you really need. You understand this right here? Nowhere right here does this, I mean, nothing in here is really going to make me elaborate as deep as I did right now in this topic right here. So I, if you guys understand, that's great. Because then we, we, we get a... Uh, we get pericarditis. Okay, the, the book, the, the chapter actually talks about it. It's an infection in that particular area. It's a bacterial infection. So it's plain. If you have itis, it's an inflammation. So if you take a deep breath, your 
love the fat, eating the heart, normally it's okay, right? It's okay right now, but if I try to it, now it hurts. Now it hurts. It's inflamed. Now it's inflamed. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why it's important to know all those layers. You gotta know which layer is the one that's actually being affected. Okay? Not now. You will be affected. Any questions? Yes, I need to know. Think about the veins, right? You guys have to know which carries oxygenated, which carries deoxygenated. So if I ask you guys the pulmonic artery, what does it speak? No, it's oxygen. It speaks it deoxygenated. It's going to be the opposite, remember? So if it's an artery, typically arteries have oxygen. Pulmonic artery, because it's in, uh, in this area right here, it speaks Essentially, um, I'm not going to draw the heart, but I'm going to draw the actual nodes with the corresponding tissue layers that send that carry on the electrical impulse. So you have the main node right here. Okay, what's this called? It's called the pace. It's the pacemaker of the heart. What's it known as? because it's right in between the right atri the right and le and right uh, right ventricle and right atrium. Okay, so the intra so the the, the atrioventricular node. After this, so it sends it, 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 it. These are like cables, right? It stimulates this right here. This is the AV node. Let me be honest with you guys. Um, 
uh, and she uh, from the hospital from the doctor, and she had a, a regular EKG. So that means that I'm, I'm worried it's a block. It's a little heavy, so I'm worried it's a block. But um, that's what this represents. Okay, guys. Any questions on this? No. Which one? The SA node is the, pa is the, the, the pacemaker because this one uh, it stimulates the the first electrical conduction. Then the SA node is the, is the pacemaker. Then this sends the electrical impulse throughout the, rate, throughout the rest of the heart. And how fast does this happen? Fractions of a second. Sorry. Boom. Fractions of a second. Okay. May I erase this? Blood pressure is probably the last thing we're going to talk about. It's going to take a while, but it's always here. Um, blood pressure. What's the average blood pressure? <coughs> what's 120? What does that represent? What's, what's it called? What is that called? I mean, uh, what is the bottom one? Now, real quick, guys, pay attention to this. I hope you guys remember it. Now, just learn it again. The systolic represents what? Contraction. Now, mind you, it's blood pressure, so it's it's representing the contra the pressure, but it's a contraction of the heart of the ventricle. Okay, so that's what the systolic is. The diastolic represents what? The relaxation or the pressure in the blood vessels when it's relaxing. When the heart, when the ventricle is not contracting, you guys know that you should be fine. Okay, understand that. The whole concept. Okay. Let's talk about uh, cardiac output and stroke volume. Now, um, every time my heart pumps, okay, and it ejects blood out, what's that called? That's a stroke volume. Thank you. 
your body, you're going to die. You have cardiomyopathy. You have some type of issue. So that's why CO is important to know because your doctor is going to give you, you're going to read these sheets and it's going to say CO. So when you see CO, know that Mr. H taught you that cardiac output is how much fluid output in one minute. And this is the determinant of whether the patient is pumping enough or sufficient blood throughout the body to keep sick life. Good with that? This is stroke long. Cardiac output in one minute. No, the test is no, the test is completely different. The test is actually done. Um, the t there's three parts to the test. We have no part in that. Cardiologists do the CO and the SC. Yeah, we just have to know what it is at the normal ranges. Uh, maybe not even normal ranges, but just know what it is. Okay. Any questions on that? Talking about blood pressure, what are barrel receptors? It's those little things on the jugular vein. Ah, you remember, yeah. So it's those little things on the jugular vein and all over the <laughs> and the carotid and all those little places that detect what? It actually, you know what it is? Yeah, blood vessels. It detects how much the blood vessels are dilating or constricting. If they're if it's relaxed or if it's uh, there's a lot of tension on the on the vessels, that lets you know if it's high blood pressure, or low blood pressure. So the barrel receptor send a message to the brain, the central part of the brain, medulla, okay, to the medulla to actually regulate the blood pressure, to either increase it or decrease it depending on what the barrel receptor say. That's the, that, does that make sense though? The blood vessels are stretched out. That means that the blood pressure is high, right? Because it's pump, the heart's pumping hard, so the blood vessels are expanding. But if there's not a lot of stretching in the blood vessels, it's kind of relaxed. The barrel receptors, the cells, the barrel receptor cells will know that there's not a lot of dilation going on to the blood pressure. Slower. Slower, right? Because the veins aren't as big. And um, what actually pushes that blood through the vein? Time to go to the doctor, they freak out because he's really buff. He's very, he's athletic, he's very healthy, right? So your heart pumps, and remember the whole traffic and uh, um, uh, analogy that I was using? All traffic, you know, as one goes, the next goes. The veins are cool because they have these little chambers, right? These little valves. Once the blood gets put through, the valves close and it won't allow it to go back. So the reason why my friend Alex's heart doesn't have to pump that much throughout a minute cycle is because there's one pump. Yeah, first of all, not a lot of fat, and he's got a lot of muscle, a lot of muscle, a lot of skeletal muscle. So every time he just does this, the skeletal muscles actually push and help move that blood along, the muscles. That's what actually um, aids in venous return, venous flow. Me, on the other hand, my resting heart rate is like 76, okay, because I don't have as much muscle in my body. Okay, so I actually have to, my heart has to pump a little harder because my muscles are not, you know, as much on my condalis. A lot of muscles, so muscles aid in the whole flow of the blood and the veins. Does that make sense? Okay. Is there anything that I went over right now that I didn't go over yesterday? Chambers all over the chambers. So I'll go over them again. Okay. Chambers we have. for it. 
decimal so decrease O2 decimal so okay then it passes to what? Okay, track that for about what are these chords called? The little flap, there's three of them, five cuts the valve, and it sends what to where? I mean, it, does, it sends what to where? To the tricuspid valve. It sends what? The oxygenated blood again. To the right ventricle. Okay, cool. Now, the blood right here, that's inside the right ventricle, what part of the heart of the three layers that we discussed is it touching? No. Endocardium. Okay? Endocardium. Endos are the innermost. Myo is in between, and then the epicardium. Okay. Um, what is this little deviation that we have right here going on in the heart? Septum. 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 Okay. So now um, the right ventricle pushes what through where? Deoxygenated through what? Um, uh, veins, oxygenated blood fills in the left atrium. Cool. After that, what goes where? Okay, oxygenated blood goes back to the mitral valve, valve to the ventricle. Left. The mitral valve is to the left ventricle. 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 Left ventricle is the thickest. What part is the thickest? The left ventricle. The myocardium. Okay, after that, what happens? Thank you. 